Welcome back, Canisius College, to Hashtag Griff Sports. I'm Kyle Ferrara. Brandon, Canisius didn't win a single game we played this week. How is anybody supposed to feel good about that? Well, there's always promise of another game tomorrow. So, you know, it's early It's early in their seasons. Everybody has, like, some kinks to work out. It's very early, so, you know, they have a chance to get together. So, yes, it was a tough week for the Griffs, but we're still here to deliver you all the highlights. And let's jump right into it now with men's soccer. They played in their home opener last Saturday. It would be the Griffs taking on the Riverhawks of University of Massachusetts Lowell. And Alex DeCarroll, as you'll see on your screen here, taking a free kick for the Griffs. We'll let the highlights catch up to us. And they blew two opportunities to score early and a lot of frustration throughout this game. There's the video coming up now, and you'll see a good kick there from DeCarroll, but a better save. They got another opportunity, blew it, and take a look at how frustrated they look. Just keep that in mind. They had another opportunity later here. They're trailing one nothing. They pull the keeper out of the goal and still can't score. Chris Barardi shot too easy to save. Here's the first goal from the Riverhawks. It's Eric Martin storming down the field right past Rainer Dalek for the goal. And moving on to the second half, the Griffs would be trailing three to nothing when Nico Baudo with a fantastic individual effort. He gets the Griffs on the board. We might see that goal again later. That was a very pretty shot. Oh yeah. But that would be all for the Griffs. They fell three to one despite 15 shots on goal to just six for the Hawks. They play again on Wednesday. The Griffs taking on the Crosstown rival UB Bulls in a tightly contested game that would end in a scoreless draw. Keeper Ryan Arvin recorded four saves in his second career shutout, and he takes a, he takes a step ahead of the competition to be the Griffs' primary keeper. Now, moving off the field and onto the court, the women's volleyball team traveled to Morgantown, West Virginia this past weekend for the Mountaineer Invitational. They lost a close game to Fort Ham on Friday afternoon, three sets to two, and were swept by West Virginia the same night. On Saturday morning, the Grizz took on Norfolk State, but unfortunately lost another tightly contested match, 3-2. to two. Later that afternoon, the Grizz faced the Navy, but were swept again, 3-0. to zero. Catching up with women's soccer, that was a goal from Mallory Ilsley right there. It would tie their game against the Titans up at 1 from last Friday night. Meanwhile, Megan Tock was having a fantastic day. She had a career-best 15 saves in that game. But she, that was a, her, the 13th right there, being her previous best of 12. Very anticlimactic, but it was there nonetheless. She told us after the game, though, she's, that she's not a superhero. And you'll see it right here. Double overtime, the shot from the Titans goes right off her right hand into the back of the net, mm. and the Griffs would fall 2-1. to one. On Sunday, the Griffs took on Northern Kentucky, but lost with the score to 6-1. to one. Senior forward Brianna Smith scored the Griffs' own goal. Her fifth of the season as she now sits just three goals shy of second place all time with 34 career goals. The Grizz as a team are now 1-5-1 on the season. Now let's take a look at what's coming up for the Grizz now. Women's soccer starts, off, starts the week off with a Friday night affair against Albany <coughs> and will also, pl also play at home Sunday at noon against Akron. Really choked that out there, Brandon. <laughs> That's the University of Akron from the great state of Ohio. Oh, and God. Moving on to the men's team, they'll play against Robert Morris at home Sunday afternoon at 3. The volleyball team will be searching for the first win of the season this weekend in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. They'll take on Farley, Dickerson, Ryder, and Bucknell in the Bucknell Invitational. They'll also play Tuesday at the Keck against UB. Lastly, Griff's Golf will compete in the Leo Keenan Invitational at Bartlett Country <laughs> Club in Olean, New York. Next on Hashtag Griff Sports, I'll be joined by Roxanne Hernandez to talk Griff's volleyball. And later, we'll debut a new segment, Don't Go Anywhere. This is Hashtag Griff Sports. All right, so <coughs> you and I will be over there. We'll be in that chair. Oh.
Welcome back to Hashtag Your Sports. I'm now joined by Roxanne Hernandez of the volleyball team. She's a middle blocker. We're in Studio B. And Roxanne, you guys have gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. You're 0 8. It's, is there any sense of worry around the team? Um, I wouldn't say so. You know, I don't think that our record necessarily solely is indicative of the kind of team we are. Um, I think if we stay process oriented, the purpose of preseason is to really just get good experience. And we're getting high competition. And I think come conference play, we'll be able to slow it down and really do um, a good job of keeping sticking to the game plan. You've had a lot of good opportunities for the freshmen to play early on this season. Have any of them really impressed you as a senior? Absolutely. They've all really stepped up and taken their roles, you know, wholly. Um, you know, Coach talks about the whole being better than the part, and it's funny because some of our freshmen have really just rolled right into it, and you wouldn't be able to tell looking on the court that we have such a young team, but again, the talent and the depth on the bench, you know, we can put anybody in, and together we mesh really well. So, If we were to put you on the spot and say, pick one that would have the best career here at Canisius, who would you pick? Putting me on the spot? Um, you know, they all play different positions, so it's hard. Uh, I would say Jackie, right now she's getting the most playing time, so she might have a little bit of a, a leg up on the competition, but again, they're really talented, so it's hard to tell. You also lost some really good talent from last year in Sam Good and Allie Severn. Did the team take a step back from losing those two players? I wouldn't say so. I think that we are an entirely different team. Um, like I said, the talent and depth is, is just is great, and we don't have any one or two people that's necessarily better than the rest, and that goes along with leadership. We all are really, really team-oriented this year, so I'm excited to see what we do come conference play. Do you think that there's different leaders this year than there were last year? Um, I think some people have kind of stepped up in, in ways that they haven't before, myself included. I've kind of been labeled like a silent leader. Um, and I think that that's true in some ways and untrue in others. I think we all do a really good job supporting each other on and off the court. And again, there's not one or two people stepping up or one or two people that everybody looks to. It's more of a team thing. <laughs> all right. Now, you're a communication major, right? Correct. Now, what's your plan when you get out of communications? Hopefully, I can get into um, you know, broadcasting. I really like the marketing side of things, too, though. Um, and I'm also taking a sports management class, which has opened my eyes up to some things. So I wouldn't go coaching route right now. I think I'm going to be more in just the communications aspect and possibly business part of it. If you were to do broadcasting, what kind of stuff specifically do you want to get into? Um, I would really like to do play-by-plays or even be involved in stats. Um, Maybe just be an announcer, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever had any experience doing that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, I had a little bit in high school, um, but besides that, not really. Right here, I've been just like taking on all different angles, so I'm still figuring it out. Okay, yeah, I, I think that stuff is really too cool. Obviously, that's what I'm trying to do with my life. I know we've got Joe on the show later. He does it a little yeah. bit, too. <laughs> but uh, it's obviously a lot of fun. Yeah, that. yeah. Now, you, were, you came in as an education major, or you came in as something different? I did. That. I did. I came in as an um, elementary education and special education um, dual. And I had a really good experience. You know, the education program is great here. Um, and then I had my first student teaching experience, which I just realized, you know, as soon, like, as soon as I stepped in front of the classroom, that just wasn't for me. Um, it wasn't a good fit. I'm good with kids, but I didn't necessarily feel at home. And so right now, um, I'm kind of searching in that sports communication side because sports is really, really close to home for me. So I think that I'm going to find my niche in communications. Well, hopefully you do. Best of luck to you. Thank Before you. you get out of here, tell us one thing about yourself that a lot of people might not know. Yeah, um, I'm really good at doing impersonations. My whole team is always complimenting me on it, and a lot of people don't know, but I'm, that's my talent, I guess. Do you have any that you can pull out right now? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. No, I don't have anything for you right now. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, no, I can't think of anything. <laughs> what, uh, you don't have to do one right now, but okay, what, yeah. what's the funniest one you've ever Coach, watched? definitely coach. And it's funny because I want to impersonate here, but I'm not even sure what to say at this point. Um, because we are live, so I'm going to just keep that G-rated and say it's in my repertoire. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So I guess some people will believe you, others might doubt it, but that's their problem. Come to me, else. see me, see me. All right, fair <laughs> enough. This is Hashtag Your Sports. That was Roxanne Hernandez. We're going to take another quick break, and I will be back with Brandon at the desk. Cool. <laughs> that day and then right after class I went over to uh, the, the Vascular Institute volunteered you know put the scrubs on and uh, one of the doctors asked me if I wanted to see an open heart surgery and so I said oh, yeah really? sure.
just as a, you know, obviously as a freshman, not really sure what I wanted to do. I ended up taking a digital media arts class, and that really just kind of jump-started, you know, my career. And I think being where we are in, in the city and, and, uh, and, and in the world with, with the uh, medical campus that we have here it is really an opportunity that I wouldn't have anywhere else. It's more than just academics. Meet different people. Go out and do things. There's so much more to college. It's an experience. I instantly fell in love with doing video work, graphic design. I started pursuing more and more opportunities in the school, uh, whether it was doing admissions videos on the sides. I did a couple videos for alumni relations, the president of the college, and then I actually got noticed last year, and they sent me over to the Philippines to create a feature-length documentary. I lived with a host family while I took classes in Spanish with Spanish professors at the University of Oviedo, and I was a Spaniard for a semester, and it was the best decision I made as a college student. I am rejoined by Brandon. We're going to debut a brand new segment for you called Tell Us How You Really Feel and Sock the Mold of another show that we've seen, so we're not going to steal anything. But in this segment, Brandon and I will play the roles of a Canisius athlete, coach, or alum and attempt to give their perspective on a certain topic. So, Brandon, you'll ask the first question, who am I supposed to be? Okay, well, Kyle, you are Megan Talk the superb keeper for the Griff's women's soccer team. You have some great individual performances. Are you frustrated that the team keeps on losing? Well, yeah, obviously I would be frustrated. Our team is not winning as many games as I would like, and I'm doing a pretty good job. I know I, I kind of struggled in our last game, but I'm not a superhero. I, I'm doing what I can. Not that anybody else isn't working hard, but I'd like to win some more games. I, I keep us in a lot of them. I'm only giving up you know, a goal or two a game. So, yeah, it would be nice to win some more. Yeah. <laughs> so now, Brandon, moving on, you are – head coach of the volleyball team, Kathy Hummel. We just talked to Roxanne. Definitely. She didn't seem to be worried that the team is 0-8 to start the season. But you, as coach, are you worried about an 0-8 start? You know what? I'm not really as worried. This is just invitationals and tourney games. They don't really count until the regular season. Right now, we're going to have to like, go into the Bucknell Invitational, and that's going to be a tune-up for the regular season where we go against uh, Buffalo on September 17th. That's going to be the main test, and that's when we're going to show our strength. So when we get there, I'll let you know. Okay, Kyle, you're Dermot McGrain, head coach of the men's soccer team, and you've been rotating through three different goalies to start the year. None of them have really claimed a job yet. Who's really going to step up? Well, that's tough to say because <laughs> we've started a different goalie every single game, and we're kind of waiting for Eric DeHaan to get back. But there's no guarantee that when he does get back, he's going to take over the job right away. Ryan Arvin played a, tech, a heck of a game last night against UB, and he didn't allow a goal, obviously, and did in a tie, but we were really happy with him. I don't think uh, I can say that anybody has really stepped up and claimed it yet, but we are happy with Ryan Arvin. Right. So, Brandon, moving on to the next topic, you are Isaac Sosa, former Griff shooting guard. He just signed to play basketball in Argentina with Penarol of the Argentinian Liga A. And you're taking the next step in your career in a brand new country. Is there anything you're nervous about? You know what? I think nervousness wouldn't be the right word for it. I think I'm more excited than nervous. It's a new country, a new opportunity, and it's one of the best teams over there. I mean, they went 18, 28 and 14 in the 2012-2013 season, and they also went to the semifinals in that league. So... I'm definitely excited to play for a top premier team in Argentina. And Isaac, no matter where you go, girls love Sosa, right? Oh, yeah. Last one, Kyle. Uh, you are Shane Conacher, little brother of Corey Conacher. You're a freshman following in your brother's footsteps. Does anything about the next four years scare you? Yeah, Brandon, uh, I'm really scared. I'm scared about the limitlessness of how much I'm going to run this place by the time oh. I'm here. All right, my brother was a legend here. He's in the NHL <laughs> now. I can be half as good as he is, and people are going to love me. People are already walking around campus saying, hey, look over there. That's Shane Conacher. I'm not scared of anything except how much I'm going to be in charge here at Canisius College. A little bit of charge, I can brand. be. I'm Shane Conacher. Corey Conacher is my brother. <laughs> okay, wow. Now I'm back to just being Kyle Ferrara and 
Along with Shane, the Griff's hockey team welcomed four other newcomers for the upcoming season. Forwards Jackie Heidi and Josh Keelick and defender Jeff Fortman round out the freshman class. They've also added defender Brandon Russo, a sophomore transfer from the Penn State club team. And at this time, we will, in the show, we will want to give our club sports shout out. Give some love. Give some love to our club rugby team. They play all their home games at Delaware Park, and their season begins with a home match against RIT. Don't miss it. Matt from Club Rugby, I DM'd you the other day. Shoot me a text so we can get you guys some coverage. Next on Hashtag Your Sports, Joe Rattigliano will take a look at what's up in Buffalo. And later we'll show you the top play from last week. Stay here. This is Hashtag Your Sports. Such a train wreck. There was one day that we had just done the uh, cardiovascular unit, um, you know, in class that day. And then right after class, I went over to the, the Vascular Institute, volunteered, you know, put the scrubs on. And uh, one of the doctors asked me if I wanted to see an open heart surgery. And so I said, oh, yeah. Good. As a, you know, obviously as a freshman, not really sure what I wanted to do. I ended up taking a digital media arts class, and that really just kind of jump-started, you know, my career. And I think being where we are in, in the city and, and, uh, and, and in the world with, with the uh, medical campus that we have here, it is really an opportunity that I wouldn't have anywhere else. It's more than just academics. Meet different people. Go out and do things. There's so much more to college. It's an experience. I instantly fell in love with doing video work, graphic design. I started pursuing more and more opportunities in the school, uh, whether it was doing admissions videos on the sides, I did a couple videos for alumni relations, the president of the college, and then I actually got noticed last year, and they sent me over to the Philippines to create a feature-length documentary. I lived with a host family while I took classes in Spanish with Spanish professors at the University of Oviedo. And I was a Spaniard for a semester, and it was the best decision I made as a college student. And we're back at Hashtag Your Sports. We're going to go to Joe Tingliano now for a Buffalo Sports Minute. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Rotigliano and here with your Buffalo Sports Minute. Just a quick recap of the Bills game this past Sunday. They did face off against the Patriots and unfortunately they came up a little bit short. The Buffalo Bills that we all know and love failed just coming up short with a 23-21 defeat to the New England Patriots. And you know some good things to take away from this game are the Bills competed. Now in the preseason we saw with the Indianapolis Colts that the Bills looked very, very, very good. A well-oiled machine, and they absolutely ran the Colts off the field in the first week of the preseason. After that, things pretty much just got a little bit worse every day. E.J. Manuel was injured. Kevin Cobb might have a career-ending concussion. Who knows what's going on with the Bills quarterback situation. That was pretty much settled on Sunday when the Bills came out with E.J. Manuel, who just recovered, and was able to make a couple of great plays, including his first two touchdown passes of his career, and honestly, folks, E.J. Manuel looks solid. The only thing that really killed the Bills this week was penalties, something the Bills are going to have to work on to become a better team and to close games. The Bills need to be a little bit more disciplined on the offensive and defensive end and keeping those yellow flags right off the field. Kyle? Thank you, Joe. Excellent analysis as always. And now we're going to take a look at our Golden Performer of the Week. This week it is Megan Tock for her career-best 15-save performance against Detroit Mercy on Friday. Despite the loss, Tak played an excellent game and is very deserving of this honor. And lastly, our top play of the week, Brandon. We showed it earlier. It was the shot from Nico Baudo in the Griff's men's soccer home opener. We'll get it up on the screen again for you. It was a beautiful individual effort from the Italian, spinning wow. right into the right corner of the goal. Let's slow it down and look at it again. He just did an excellent job staying with the ball. Coach McGrain said it was their toughest shot of the day of the 15 shots on goal. Ironically, it was the one that went in. Incredible goal. Incredible is mm. right. And now it is time for us to end the show and 
Let's end by telling you to check out our new website, griffintv.net. You can find us on Facebook, hashtag Griff Sports in the search bar. Follow us on Twitter, at Griff Sports 4. I am at KFPXP, Brandon Rudd, at Brandon underscore Rudd, 316. Brandon, today was a train wreck. I'm going to be blunt, but uh, let's yeah. get out of here with our heads intact. Yeah, let's do that. This is hashtag Griff Sports. See you guys.